السلام علیکم ویورز میں ہوں شاہد اقبال ریحان ایک نئی ویڈیو کے ساتھ ایک نئے ٹاپک کے ساتھ ویورز اور آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں شاہد ٹیک اور میں آپ کو اس چینل میں خوش آمدید کہتا ہوں دا پریمیم لیپ ٹاپ مارکیٹ بٹ اٹس ناٹ گن بی فار ایوری ون اٹس ویری مچ این ایڈیو سنکریٹک مشین دا وچ مینس اٹس اپیل ریلی ڈیپینڈز آن ہاؤ یو ار گوئنگ ٹو یوز اٹ بلٹ فرام بلیک الومینیم اٹس بوت سولڈ اینڈ لائٹ ویٹ ٹیپلی ان دا اسکیلز ایٹ جسٹ 1.29 کلو گرامز اٹس 30 ملی میٹر تھک ٹو مینگ اف سلائڈ ان ٹو اینی بیگ ود آؤٹ فاس There's a good selection of ports, well, for an Ultrabook anyway, including two USB 3 connectors, a Thunderbolt 3 USB 3.1 port, which you can also use for charging, as well as a HDMI port and a 3.5mm headphone jack. But unfortunately, there is no SD card slot. The screen is a bit of a strange beast. It's got a 12.5 inch IGZO or IGZO touch sensitive panel inside a 13.3 inch frame. This means the bezels are gigantic, which is a real shame because the screen itself is pretty good. It's got a 2560 by 1440 panel, but because it's so small, you have to massively increase Windows 10's scaling options in order to be able to actually read what's on the screen. Color performance is good though, with 93% of the sRGB color gamut covered, 367 nits of brightness, and a 1100 to 1 contrast ratio, which means images look punchy and are packed with details, but it is hard to overlook those seriously ugly bezels. As for sound, the speakers are great as well, perfect for Netflix binges and the odd bit of music. As for the keyboard, well, it feels a bit cheap and rattly if I'm honest and doesn't have a huge amount of travel. And while travel isn't the be all and end all of laptop keyboards, it doesn't feel as good as a Dell XPS 13. Using Razer's Synapse software, you can configure fancy RGB backlighting effects, a feature normally only found on gaming machines. It's pretty fun, but not really essential. The touchpad isn't brilliant either, it's not particularly sensitive, and while this can be fixed in Windows' touchpad settings, it still feels significantly more sluggish than proper Microsoft Precision touchpads. One very cool feature though is using the Thunderbolt 3 port to hook up the Blade Stealth to the core graphics dock for a huge gaming performance boost, but we'll cover that in a separate review. Inside we've got a dual core Intel Core i7 7500U, that's the latest Hebe Lake processor, but most likely due to its thin chassis, the cooling fans do kick up to an enormous fuss during even moderately challenging tasks, such as opening or loading Chrome tabs. The model I'm reviewing here comes with 16GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD, the latter of which managed a decent 1275MB per second read speeds, which is very speedy indeed. Battery life is average at best. I was able to get around 5 hours of moderate work out of the Blade Stealth, but I'd never feel comfortable leaving the charger at home, and this is a bit disappointing. This all makes the Blade Stealth a bit of a puzzling machine. While it nicely undercuts the equivalent Dell XPS 13, around £70 cheaper in like for like specs, and double the RAM, there are compromises. Build, screen size, and battery life are all issues, and at this price, they're less easy to forgive, even if it does have the unique selling point of working with a Razer Core. So the gaming focused cult of Razer has produced a powerful and desirable laptop, but it's not a sensible choice for most people. Thank you very much for watching. Let us know what you make of the Razer in the comments below. And for more laptop news and reviews, do stay tuned to trustedreviews.com.